The floppy disk development was a very crucial part of Apple's development, even to this day. Um, it came about a little bit by accident. We were running for about a year. And Mike Markula, who was our marketing guy and our chief financial guy, had one major thing he wanted to do, computers in the home. He made sure that our first ad showed a guy working on a checkbook on the computer. So he got Randy to write a program in BASIC, in our integer BASIC, to handle checkbooks in the home. There was one problem. We didn't have floppy disks in 1977 when we introduced it. We had cassette tape. So you'd sit there and load your program in for a few minutes, then you'd load your checkbook data in for a few minutes, you'd change one check, and then you'd store it back out for a few minutes. It took a, it was a little bit long for one check. I think the paper method was a little better. Well, Mike Markle went to an executive staff meeting one day, and this was his pet project. And you get tied a lot closer to your pet projects all throughout Apple's history. The pet projects are the ones that have made it or gone the farthest or been the ones that got the most attention until the person whose pet project it was got dismissed. But anyway, Mike Markle went to the executive staff meeting, wrote down 20 things that we needed most to add to the Apple II. And first on the list, floppy disk, because that's the way his checkbook program was going to run fast enough to make sense. And number two was... I'm sorry, number one was floating point basic, actually, I think. Or number two was floating point basic. So you could actually write dollars and cents in, in floating point instead of integers. And uh, that would solve the programming hassles. Well, I went out of that meeting and I said, I'll, I'll look at floppy disks. But I had never taken a course or read a book on how floppy disk controllers are designed or what they do. I had no idea to how to find out what they do. I was going to have to explore it from the bottom up and try to figure out what will at least work and appear to do the things that all the others do, since I don't know how they work. I studied a competitor's schematics, and I started looking. I'm trying to figure out why I'd come up with a clever little circuit back at HP that would read and write data at about as fast as I thought a floppy disk could go, and yet this circuit only took five chips. And I was wondering, why is every controller in the world 50 chips? I've got to put in all the right things. So I started studying their schematic, and I went through and I figured out what every little chip did, and in the end, I figured out my little five-chip circuit actually did more. So I knew I was onto another winner.